Yo, it's your boy, Mean Gene 313. You know you heard, and this is the Comedy Corner. Way outside the box, where that. We out the box with it. With your man's Mean Gene 313. You know you heard. And my esteemed guest, I'm so happy and proud that he came through. My man's right here is a comedian, stand up. He's an actor where he want to be. He writes his own stuff. Entrepreneur. Uh, we kind of soon. <laughs> he gonna tell you what the good shit at. This is the comedian version. This is the comedy uh, Jacquees. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Only because he got swag and got them long ass dreads, and uh, he might take your girl to bed. You niggas are not gonna pull my shit out like Trey Song. <laughs> oh nah, you know my man's deep out here. Now y'all ain't running up on him like Trey Song's deep. But no, this is my man's Mo D. Say what up? What's good, family? You know. Yeah, shit. Good to see you, my boy. Yeah, good to see you. Good to be seen. What you talking about? Get out the way for a little minute. Hey, there, you know? Know. Well, hold on. One time for one time, we got to show off the kicks. You know what I'm saying? Show me the kicks one time, you know? Man's gang, y'all know the business. Real shit. that dirt off my shoulders, you know what I'm saying? One time for one time. But no, man, let motherfuckers know a little bit about you, man. You know what I'm saying? Do your little intro one time. You know what I'm saying? Tell them about yourself. Y'all know I'm on these, obviously. You know, good introduction. I'm Long Beach, California. And I grew up in all over California, Southern California, you know, Northern California, to me, they two of the states of respect. Whoa. And it's no, no Whoa. disrespect to, hey, no disrespect Cali to, Cali beef. You know what I'm saying? We no. want all the smoke. No. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't no beef, though, you know, I got love out there, you know what I'm saying? It's my little my Vallejo nigga. Y'all know how we rock it. Burn up, burn up. Yeah, you know, grew up all around San Diego, uh, Riverside, Maria. It never Valley, rains in LA, KLM, so yeah. My snow. We don't have the rights to that book that I was singing. You got it, though. But yeah, too much. No, Jock, we shall have it. Jock, we stand. See, that's why he put the hair up. He's like, y'all ain't going to compare me to nobody. I knew he had that one in the chamber. I was on my major TV other shit. I see him coming. But man, all right, so you out here from California. You've been doing your thing for a while. How long have you been in Arizona? What? Brought you out to the desk. Uh, what brought you out here this way? But in a good way though. I mean, yeah. Arizona became my second home, so I can't even be upset about it. But she brought me out here in like 2005. All right. So I was like 15 years old, and my first week out here, I hated it. Damn. What the desert do to you, nigga? The fuck? Burn me, nigga. <laughs> what you mean? I'm out of here, nigga. What month did you come? My birthday is, is December 5th. Okay. It was 106 degrees on my birthday. There wasn't no fucking 106 in December, no. nigga. It was 100. What year was this? 2005. 2000. Yeah, it was 2005. Ah, right? uh, man. Somebody look that shit up. Somebody Google me. I, I vividly remember this shit. 106. I was out here for a week, seven <laughs> days, six days, maybe. I was back in California. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 18, 16, my mom moved out here. Man. After a while, I just bounced back and forth from Cali to Arizona, Cali to Arizona. To Arizona's my second home, you know what I mean? So I decided to come back out here and stay out here. Yeah. Cali was cool, but it just got, like I said, a little bit too pricey out there. You know what I mean? The price of living in Cali and the price of living out here, you're going to have you a nice little five bedroom house. If you live in Cali, you're going to have you a nice little studio. All right. Yeah, you know I mean, so I see the difference. But y'all brought that Cali money over here, raising up the prices on shit. Nah. Well, but the shit was five thousand. Y'all like, nah. Cali, nigga, I'm gonna drop eight. Yeah, nah. Nah, 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 the price living went up. Uh, Midwest, Chicago, niggas, like, <laughs> asses out here, nigga. And so <laughs> y'all brought that Cali nah, money. This, niggas is eating out here, though. <laughs> you know what I mean? True, so man. I feel like this is real good melting pot for whatever you want to do, even if it's like, yeah. you know, being in the streets, you, hey, you can live that street life if you want for that. I would really suggest it. No, ain't nowhere. You know what I mean? But if you want to do whatever you want to do or whatever avenues you want to rock in, Arizona is definitely a good melting pot. It's like, it's looking a land of opportunity out here. You know what I mean? So like, it's open enough for everybody. It's a little bit of stuff for the folks that grew up in uh, and came up out here. From out west, from the east coast, from the midwest, like it's enough room for everybody to eat. Yeah. That's what I love about Arizona. One thing, yeah, that's, that's one thing about Arizona. They do got a room to grow out there. You want to get out the way and get on your shit? It's definitely the place to come. Don't, don't come, come, out, come here. out here. <laughs> don't come out here doing the don't same shit you was doing at home. Respectfully, man. Like I said, this is second home, nigga. So my opinion matters, dude. I, yeah. I would definitely so. suggest make sure you. 
to move proper, think wisely, remember where you at. You know what I mean? Just yeah. don't be extra. I feel that. I feel that. So besides comedy, what other uh, venues or what other uh, things are you getting into? Like, are you just doing comedy? Are you working on the scene? Uh, you got a uh, yeah. you want to promote? Oh yeah, most definitely. Uh, I do. I got a business called Gourmet Goodies. You can look me up on Instagram at Gourmet Goodies LLC. You know, goodies. But check me out. And uh, whatever you eat, I infuse. So beanie crab legs. You must uh, it's called seafood boil. I can go ahead and infuse that for you. If you want buffalo wings, I definitely do that. If you want chicken alfredo, whatever it is, I'm going. To you just eat salads. We got some dressing for you to go ahead and drink one for you. So you just sprinkle on motherfuckers and shit, put drops on there. Yeah, how you do I'm that? TNC certified. Stop it, stop it. Tell them, tell them the name of the brand one more time and where they can find you at. Gourmet Goodies. That's Gourmet Goodies LLC. Okay. You can find me on Instagram. You can definitely send me a DM. Whatever you eat, whatever you want. Meal prep, whatever you need. Gourmet Goodies, buddy. Goodies. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. So let's get into your comedy career. That's how I met you. You know, I, I did a show a little while ago called the Rooftop Comedy Show, and uh, somebody recommended you. They was like, "I got young blood. He out here doing his thing. He loves comedy. He's passionate about it. I think he'd be a great opener for you." You came, you held it down, you blew it down. Like, what was that? They shit together. Like, oh, I know, but these gonna come out here like this. Hold on, man. Watch this button, I'm going to turn you down. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, you know, what got you into comedy? Because everybody has their own story of how they started fucking around on the mic. Honestly, it's just been, it's one of those passions that she was pulling back, back murdered for so long, and she finally picked it up and started cooking. And she was a masterpiece. And it's, it's just really something where I just, I took forever because all my friends were on the news. Everybody said, if I need Meaning, I've always been class clown in school and everything, so it's really serious. I decided to finally take the series. Yeah, so it's great. Take the series. It really showed me who I was. You had to be different avenue of person who I would be. I grew up, like you said, I grew up in Cali, so I got to see more street life than I did on the stage. Of course. And me, being in the streets and being on the stage is kind of the same thing, because it's just me and everything. The action I get when I'm funny, I love it. The action I get on the streets, I hate it. it. It's not like that energy after you've had a good show where, you're like, first off, you feel it on the stage. You still feel it when you get off the stage, but when people tell you, like, bro, you did your flag, I'll be like, wow. Oh, the best thing is when somebody say, I haven't been out in so long, or I've been doing this and that, so I fucked around, I came to this show, and I'm so glad I came because I saw you. Yeah, I did. Did the first one. Yeah, I changed your life. Like, you just said, you're on fire. Oh, okay. I appreciate yeah. you. It was definitely, definitely. And it was a blessing because that, that was my true first time being on the stage. So it was a, it was a true privilege and blessing that you allowed me to go ahead and do that for my first Oh, so I'm gonna say that one more time louder for the people in the back that didn't hear you. Man, I don't know, me and Gene, three one third, put niggas together and shit like a whole outfit, nigga. Look. Yeah, I'm talking about like, it was a true blessing for your boy and bless me to be able to be on stage, you know what I mean? And bless those people in my life, my atmosphere, you know what I mean? Yeah, it just it was an honor. You know? well, where else have you performed yeah. since then? And uh, how has that, you know what I'm saying, opened your eyes to the, to the realm of uh, comedy and what you can do out here in Arizona? To be honest, I ain't performed anywhere else yet. I'm gonna wait for you to throw another show so we can tear some more shit up. Oh man, damn. I mean, I gotta, I gotta Crush. keep this shit going. You know what I'm saying? If I'm gonna do it right, I gotta do it strategically. Okay, okay. I don't want to make sure we're not right audience, but I'm open for any type of show. I just want to make sure mentally I'm prepared for you. You know what I mean? So that's real. That's keep real. Everybody open. Y'all know where I'm at. Right, Mo D, y'all better holler at him on Instagram, Facebook. We gonna get this man together and shit. Most definitely. You know what I'm saying? But uh, with that being said, you know, where does your comedy style come from and what message are you trying to put out when you do get on stage, when you do do your thing, or just when they see you in general? What does Mo D's mean to you? Uh, well, really, when I'm on stage and I'm Mo D's, I'm trying to get, com I would say, comical. My main thing is making sure that I can connect with people. So my stories are my stories, but everybody has similarities in their stories. So sometimes things that go wrong in your life, you know, 
everybody got their own little problems, but tears of a cloth. Sometimes you gotta see the, sometimes you gotta see the pain, sometimes you gotta see the joy in the pain. Sometimes you gotta laugh at things that's not supposed to be laughing. And I just wanna bring that to the front of everything that I go through. You know what I mean? I don't wanna be hiding anything, I wanna be transparent with my family. So you get to know me sitting on stage, it's just all one three sixty of my whole name and name of me on stage. To see the whole everything. This is who I am. I'm gonna be off stage. My kids see me on movies, you know what I mean? Sometimes I'm daddy, sometimes I'm Moshe, you never even see it. But when I'm Modis, <laughs> just believe. You know what I mean? You know, we gotta dig. Yeah, you ain't just gonna act like you ain't just say that shit. What is Moshe? Who is Moshe? Who is that name? It's my government name. So those who know me by that name, it's more of a strategic. It's more of Y'all know me from school to work. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's more of a you know what I mean? Like, like it's a business name. Like, if you ever want to see a resume, it's probably going to have that. For the most part, my is just, it's my ultimate. You know Well, we were talking about your entrepreneurship uh, with your weed and fuse uh, company. How did that get started? Uh, what brought you to that? Is that a passion of yours, a pastime? Like, what made you want to get I've to that brand? I've been weed since I was eight years old. Mm -hmm. Terrible. Hey, you can back check that. You hear me? But where's uh, child protection services? Who was who, letting let this uh, nigga uh, smoke? <laughs> <laughs> this nigga was in the alleys and shit smoking. I was in the G-Boy's bar ball here. <laughs> Southern California, I gotta do better. Y'all got to do Hey, Prop 26 was going crazy. <laughs> and, uh, it's just, I've always been intrigued with like marijuana and everything. So finally, that everything became legal out here. And, the stipulation when I was growing up in Cali, I've always been learning how to cook and always been like a, a, a chef in the kitchen. Okay. So once I put the weed and I love to eat and I can put them together, it's a business that shit and I had to play. Coming from a skinny nigga, sometimes we don't feel like eating and shit. Oh, yeah. You put I'm, that shit on there, I gotta eat now. Nah. Clear this barrel out of here. Hey, you gotta feed us, nigga. Don't let this skinny, skinny fool you. I'll tear some shit down. <laughs> I ain't got a, I don't got a food business for no reason. <laughs> he got tired of paying them prices. Like, I cook this shit my damn self. Y'all don't be fucked up. Yeah, damn right. <laughs> but yeah. Are you catering or are you uh, bring a place to folks? Can they call up and get a plate or they only can get the infused food? You know, you can definitely get uh, what's it called just a, a regular plate, whatever you. Whatever you want to recommend, I'm always open to anything. So it doesn't have to just be THC based, it doesn't have to be CBD. It can be just a regular gourmet meal, whatever you feel like you want to eat. We can go ahead and talk prices in the, in the uh, inbox, you know what I mean? Because it depends on what you want. I can't necessarily give you price. And then once you give me a full on meal, you want steak and you want lobster, you want a whole seafood boil, but you want $30. So let's be real. You know what I mean? Like, we're going to have to talk about it, but it's, yeah, I'm definitely open to. Make sure all needs are met. So, if folks hit your line, are you ready to go deliver this food right now? You got to tell them, like, all right, I'll be here in about half a day. I got to go buy the ingredients. Oh, no, whenever you're ready. <laughs> whenever you need. You know what I mean? I also do, I do treats as well. So, if you want, like, whoopie pies, if you want brownies, you want brookies, that's brownies and cookies put together. Whatever you need. I got it. Pies, cheesecakes, whatever you need. That nigga was high when he came up in there. You want the brookies, nigga? I got some brookies, nigga. What the fuck is that? I was going to call them brookies, but we don't have them. Nah. Crookies be having you crooked, nigga. You be laying sideways. Like, bro. Yeah, yeah. I got to go to work tomorrow. I'm about to call off. Oh, this yeah. Not, you're not really up. doing anything when you eat my food. <laughs> <laughs> And that's edibles or not. You know what I'm talking about? He said anything like baby. You, I just, you yeah. want this dick? You saw this ate them cookies earlier. What the fuck up? I'm <laughs> well, you gonna get a double dose, man. <laughs> you saw me snacking out on no cookies. Like, I don't got nothing for nobody. Hey, you want the cookie? I'm about to give you that 68. I owe you one. What you talking about? <laughs> 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 Oh, man, but you, whenever I see you, always stylish, man. You know what I'm saying? That, that definitely got to come from the, uh, the county side. Talk about your style with, with clothing and just fashion. And I see you with the uh, with the glasses on, them bitches and stuff. Like, appreciate you. What's your style like? What, what do you feel like? Because I know you don't just walk out the house. You got to figure out what you about to put up.
from Detroit, we we don't wear we don't wear like just uh, regular shit. We wear outfits. Like, yeah. We gotta fit it out first. Every, we gotta pick everything. Your whole outfit starts to be mental when you wake up. Mm. First, you know what I mean? Because there may be days where I'm feeling like I'm in a good mood, I'm feeling bright and everything, so I gotta wear bright clothes and that's how my day goes. All right. And maybe some days they go out, wake up, and I'm like, damn. I gotta go hit the trenches real quick. I gotta go get into some shit to where it's like, nigga, my mental game gotta be strong to handle it when I go to work. Mm. So I gotta wear my, where I want my black tie or my get some dark colors. You know what I mean? So, Mr. I ain't stressing the day. <laughs> if you see me in some regular vibrant colors, just know I'm having a good day. I mean, if you see me in some dark colors, go ahead and tap me on the shoulder. Tell me it's gonna get better. You know what I mean? And you wear it all black. He on his emo shit. But if you see me, no, I'm some feeling good. Don't got all black on this shit. If you see me in black, go back in the house. Respect. <laughs> I don't even own a pair of black forces. So if I gotta go buy something, just go. You wouldn't like horses. Yeah. Nobody's supposed to see you anyway. Oh man. <laughs> I'm putting on the work clothes. He is saddle baby. You hear me? The black, the black force. We going to work. We gotta go have yeah. some minutes. Yeah. Somebody fucked up. We shoot down for you. Everybody got to jump. Jake, what are you talking about? <laughs> Shooting with assistance. Yeah. yeah. You swagged up too with the tats. You know what I'm saying? My my tattoos is cut. But by, by the time baby see this, she know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> I got I got them down there. <laughs> <laughs> Do your tattoos mean anything, or was you just a young nigga just getting tatted with anything? Nah, I seen a lot of people do that, so that was like, the main reason why everything I put on me, all the shirt, everything had to be like this one here is the RIP for my brother Corn Bread. I'm sure they they can see yeah, that real good. You know what I'm saying? For some just that man, just that. That's just a profit tatted right here on my forearm. Well, one down. Yeah, I mean that's every time I pray. I move with my hand. I got the one up, you know what I mean? It's the extra life God will play Super Mario. Y'all know. <laughs> you gotta get the one up to get the extra life. I mean, then that, 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 that. I'm gonna give my brother an extra life, so he got the one up right there. I'm right here, because, you know. My life is like a movie, everything I do is on stage, so. He got the mic because he speaks soft, so he got it right there to kind of. I speak low yeah. to and the crazy part is, we have the same conversation <laughs> at the bar, so, me and bro. I'm hoping y'all can hear this shit on this fucking video, I'm gonna I have to go edit this bitch. I'm literally playing music, talking lower than the music, talking to bro, and he's just gonna be like, nigga, Bro, I can't hear what the fuck you're saying. I'm like, nigga, I'm talking to you, but I'm listening to the music, though, nigga. I'm driving, too, so. What about the numbers on the side, the Roman? Oh, yeah. So this is my daughter's birthday, 411, 20. Okay, 411, 14, excuse me. And then I got my uh, son's birthday right here, and that's July 13, 2020. Tell your son, I said, what up, though? We canceled, nigga, July 6th. What up? Yeah, that's cool. What's up? Yeah, we go through our shit. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what it is. You be seeing your son, like, nigga, why is you true? Yeah, why am I a cancer baby? Yeah, he's so he's so different. <laughs> <laughs> we the most misunderstood side out there, and I can I can hear y'all talking shit right now. Misunderstand cancer. Nah, I'm confused. <laughs> nah, we ain't gonna, y'all confused. Y'all the most y'all the most independent, dependent people I've ever <laughs> in, in my life. Y'all want to be by yourselves, but y'all want somebody with y'all. So bad. Nigga, that makes it. That don't make no sense to y'all. No. Oh, God, God. No. I, I want to be by myself, but I want you over there by yourself, and we by I'm ourselves doing together. Okay. Well, I'm doing my thing, but we doing things together. Like, yeah. That would make sense. <laughs> it makes so much sense. That makes shit. So much sense, man. I'm playing the game. She on the computer. We are not doing the same thing. But it, we, it really we doing our thing together separately. Nah, listen, you know what I'm saying? Unless it's business, I understand it. You're not going to be like that. You know, you know, it's like, you use me for my love. <laughs> <laughs> like so you just going to absorb my energy and not give me nothing back? You just want to hug and laugh and get it. Nah, yeah, I get the fuck on. You're going to show me like 20 minutes. <laughs> I got what I need. Got to get mine. I love you got to get you. I love all my friends. <laughs> I just had another baby. Now, yeah, 2022. Mm -hmm. That's me too. You know, until the building your village. Yeah. I gotta build up that kingdom because the bitch costs money. Man. <laughs> it don't stop. It don't stop. Because I feel like the more you have, the more expensive life gets. <laughs> that's, that's a blessing. Awesome blessing sure. you, you got something that's more precious, more expensive than any 
one thing or anything that could be purchased. You know what I'm saying? I like it. Kind of my kids for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Beautiful. So talking about fatherhood, I can already feel the pride in your voice when you talk about your kids. And I know you just recently had an event with your daughter. Let's talk about that and how that made you feel. Because I, I saw you on the book talking your ish. You was like, I can't wait was for this to come up. This is the highlight of my year. So the far. highlight of my life. That's from the day she was conceived, I do. Let's talk about Let's give her some shine, some love. Tell us her name. Shout out to my daughter, Jada. Daddy loves you so much. And I had so much fun yesterday. Appreciate you looking so beautiful and gorgeous. Man. And inviting me and letting me allow to be your father. You know what I mean? The privilege that I have. The daddy daughter. Be able to take you. Shout out to school too. We yeah, school. Man. Shout out. Shout out from elementary too. Y'all did y'all thing. DJ went crazy. Um, I'm actually now a reigning champ for the hula hoop contest. If anybody wants to <laughs> actually it's going down. Uh, Jay's dad sacks about me. The whole song and a half. Just throw that out there. Uh, Not the whole song and a half. Hips still hurt. <laughs> I can tell. I will tell you what. Hula hoops do not play with your hips or your core. Uh, I see so why, that's a whole worker. I see why the Zuma classes be busting like that. <laughs> they be on that trampoline going crazy. They dancing. So, yeah. He I, went in there raw talking I, shit, and that nigga couldn't feel his ass the next day. <laughs> I was just like, you gonna do it? I'm just like, I can't say no. Yeah, it's my baby girl. You know, I oh, walk walking down Why do you think that made you feel so alive, so feel? It's, it's my baby girl. It's nothing like taking. Taking the, the opportunity and the privilege of being able to take a piece of yourself. So, I mean, all my kids are a piece of me. I see my daughter just smile, laugh. She's just like me. She looks just like me. So, the daughters always be looking like the fucking daddies, man. Like, I've got to stop talking like shit about y'all baby daddies while y'all pregnant. Uh. <laughs> it's y'all fault. Hey, bring you love. Because you're going to have a piece of me running around your house all the time, and you're going to be upset. I was like, girl, why are you talking about your baby daddy and shit like that? You fucked him. You chose that nigga. That, that was he just, changed. He wouldn't like that when I was being. You did nine months older. So that he gave you all the red flags and you was just like, fuck it up. He gonna change. He gonna change. Yeah, nigga. <laughs> I, I'm gonna give him a chance. Maybe baby gonna change him. Male or female, do not ignore the red flags. Do not ignore the red flags. That be that be universe warning your dumb ass. You know what I'm saying? I, I, Trust your gut feeling, because you wouldn't lie to me. I, 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 I didn't let some red flags go, and I didn't yeah, pay the fucking price for that shit. I just slipped on uh, somewhere for a sign. Like, oh, Man, we all have it, it was right there. You like, oh, it ain't that slippery. It ain't that bad. It ain't that bad. Uh, I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> I got some uh, slip resistant shoes on. Yeah, you ain't ready for this one. Yeah, my shoes are on. <laughs> <laughs> you see what happened with you jumping up the gym. Yeah. Usually, from from my experience, like especially with our generation, we care or think about our kids a little bit more because we came from a generation that was messed up. You know, the generation curses get passed down from generation to generation. And that's the thing. Don't that get me started on the, the systematic <laughs> way they try to break down the black, down the black family, the the, the brown <laughs> and black family. household. Yeah. Man, like that was my main thing. Like me coming. Like knows like my kids, my main focus is making sure I'm there and they know who I am. Yeah, I mean, because I grew up without a father. Like, I was gonna get to the house. I know a lot of people grew up like generational without fathers. And so my main focus is making sure my kids know who I am and know who they come from and their history and why they act a certain way. You know, what I mean, there'll be times where a kid may be with you or your child may be with you. Like, why are you acting like this? It's because the other side of him is a piece of something that he doesn't know. So they act just like that. Like, for example, my daughter, she'll sit there and she'll just do random stuff. Like, if we take her to a store and you look back randomly, she'll sit there and just start pants. And I'm like, why did she do that? And I'm like, randomly, like, you take me to the store, you look back, I'm just sitting there dancing. Like, nigga, why am I doing this? But it's just like, that's just what it is. That's nature versus nurture. Like, some yeah. things, yeah, of course, you gather by, you know, being around certain things in your area, in your environment. Mm-hmm. Some shit's just inbred in you. It's in my blood. DNA is genetic. <laughs> the same thing, like, I'm good at math. My daughter is excelling at math. So it's like, it's it's a passed down generational trait. I appreciate that. So then so I'm looking at her like, you acting and looking just like your dad. You know, my nerves. She was like, <laughs> so weird. 
And I'm like, dude, that's me. I act just like that. You don't remember? I just do all that weirdo shit. Yeah. So it's just like, it's fun. Like I was saying before, the daughters always look just like the daddies. And then the fucking boys were looking just like they mom. Which is crazy. <laughs> All my things are like me. They, they my little split in the All my little attitudes. Man, that's what's up. You teaching them about business? You teaching them about your business? Or like, what, what generational gems are you dropping on my your kids? My main focus is making sure my kids understand the difference between being possible. Because hmm. you can work for somebody in the beginning. Long term mindset is to be. But if you're working with somebody just to get by and sustain your lifestyle or whatever that is, mentally, you're just going to throw it in a different So I've always wanted them to have that entrepreneurship and that open mind to think whatever I'm going to be, I can be. The opportunity is out there. Yeah. As long as it's progressive and long as it's a positive thing, I support anything out there. They want to be a doctor one day and then the next week they want to be a professional soccer player, then guess what? You want know, soccer. But we're going to ride this whole soccer camp out and figure it out before you decide to switch it like a professional buyer. Or whatever you want to do, you know what I mean? I'm always hoping for that. Because there's no telling what they're good at. They don't know yet. Their mind is still developing. So the opportunity is whatever they want to be is open. So I'm you change with life. Like, that's what life is. It's about growing and changing. You figure, oh, I'm good at this. I like this one minute. You get into it and you like, I've changed. I've grown since then. Now I understand that I really like this. I'm good at this. This comes naturally to me. Like, you know, it's like me with comedy. I used to try to uh, do music. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm good at music, but well, what you do on the music? What, you, you make the beats. You rap. You I'm, sing. I'm what rap, you do? I'm, 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 I got some little melody songs. I don't sing. I ain't no Jack Please. I know he was playing for us. He had to use it. I had to use it. That's what we said, and I had to keep my eyes closed. This I hope he forgot. Please. But no, I, I definitely, uh, I definitely rap. I write my own music and all that. But when it came to the comedy, it's always been something that I've always been good at. I've always done introductions for people. Even when I was like 15, 16, I've done it. I've been like music videos for uh, Glasses and all that. A little B rolls and stuff like that. Right. So it was cool though, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I've always had a passion for me doing comedy. I finally did it. It's it. I took the light jacket off and just jumped in the work. I'll jump off the cliff, see if you learn how to swim. You know what I mean? I want to see if I had it, and I actually did. So it was a great, great opportunity for me to do that and be able to make sure it happened the right way. All right, that's for sure. As one of your uh, comedian, I want to say mentors, but just uh, big bros. I would say that. I would tell you, like, Jim Pierce, for sure. man, you definitely got to get the open mics, bro. Don't be scared of these open mics. That's definitely what I need to do. I've, been, I've had opportunities to do some, but like I said, like I said jumping off the bridge at one time was cool. It was like, <laughs> I, had, I had a good swim that day. Is it going to be the same currents next time? Like, it's, it's, how do you say it's real nerve? It's nerve over there. You, you gotta go through the trenches. You gotta get your feet dirty. You gotta get the booze. You know, I want to say. You gotta practice. That's what the open mics is for. You go to the open mics, practice, network, go see other folks. That's so like I've been saying this bitch practice. <laughs> we talk about practice. practice. Yeah, you gotta fucking practice. Kevin Hart got open up for me. Shit, sit sign on one way in your head, and then it comes out different when you say it. And, and or you forget some shit, and you're like, damn, I, I thought I knew it, because you only practiced it up here. You didn't me say it out loud in the mirror. The real shit. You got to tell It sounded good up in there. I said it out loud, like, oh, damn, that was kind of trash. Oh, that was ass. Damn. They didn't like it either. I don't even laugh at that. Damn, you got to find your voice. That's the thing. You got to find yourself on stage, yourself in the streets, yourself in business, yourself with your family. It's three different niggas versus yourself on stage. Say it's really a, it's like a gladiator school and everything. I feel like I gotta go through those times. You know, to actually understand that. And that's very, very true. But it's like when you go on stage, you're a whole different person. I'm mean, say when I'm on these, niggas know me, people know me, but when I'm on these on stage, it's just so how funny are you? You know what I mean? Like I may be funny with my friends, but how funny are you for me? And I love that opportunity to be able to express myself and start by to enjoy who I am. That's your therapy too. You gonna say some shit on there you might not have meant to say, but it had to come out. You know what I'm saying? It's just like sitting on the therapist couch. Why did I tell you this? I was too open. <laughs> but you're being into yourself. So I definitely want you to do that because this cat 
He's a funny brother, man, for real, for real. And the fact that he's uh, pretty much fresh and new to the game, but he got all that deep inside, like, we want to mature that. We want to we want to uh, work on that and get it bigger and better. But this man, no matter what he's doing, he does the best at it. He's a he's a king in his realm. He's a, a G in the game, and uh, I'm just blessed that I got to meet him. And we we work from here. We we network. I'm about to get this motherfucker pick me up. We going to open mics together. If I got to drag his ass, Facts. but I mean, he, hit this blunt. Nigga, turn <laughs> and turn them nerves down. We just gonna turn them. <laughs> yeah, you have a little sip of something. You hear me? You have a little drink. You drink a little bit. Relax and definitely, definitely smoke a nice one. Definitely. That's like you said. I need to stop being so nervous. That's something I'm so good at. That being said, we about to get him the mic. We about to get him the camera for about five, ten minutes. I'm about to let him do an open monologue. He can just talk. He can just promote himself, or he can get a quick little five minute set out of his head that he been thinking about. Cause I told him, hey. Uh, the comedy corner, we tell jokes, we talk shit, and then let motherfuckers know who we is. So, this is the big comedian, Mo D's. He about to hit you with some funny, with some love, and some shit from himself. Mo D's, take over the mic, man. Tell, tell them about yourself. And, and y'all know. Give him a quick monologue. Hit him with y'all know how jokes. it is. It's Mo D's, man. You know, I just, I just want to understand, you know, how everybody feels. I just want to make sure we all gonna be on the same page for this little ride that we got to go on. There's two things that I want to express, and I want you to take a shit too. But, we're going to have some laughs along the way. You know what I mean? So I appreciate y'all being here. I appreciate y'all watching this long to understand it. And, uh, you know, this is who I am. And like I said, I went to a daughter daddy dance. It was fun. It was great. You know what I mean? It was one of those things where you get to experience life in a different aspect. And I'm glad I was able to do so. But the next time I decide to do something like that, I might want to practice on my hip motions. Because they had me out there moving. <laughs> For about a song and a half, you know what I mean? I thought I was doing the Mamba. They had me out there doing the Cabbage Patch. They had me out there doing the Jenga. They had me out there doing it. The funniest part was, I want to know why we was doing the, uh, what's that, the Cupid Shuffle. Oh, man. They had us out there doing the Cupid Shuffle. And when he said Charlie Brown, why did nobody know how to Charlie Brown? Y'all show me your age. It was like <laughs> seven, eight black people in there who knew what they was doing. The rest of them had no clue, no disrespect to the different obviously, you know, the ethnic groups out there that I don't understand, but Charlie Brown is the same. Yeah, yeah. That's like they're doing Charlie next to me. That's all I had. Yeah, yeah. It was out there. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you don't know the wrong one. Nothing wrong with one, bitch. It's just shoulder roll. Yeah. Shoulder lean, that's that's old for motherfuckers too. <laughs> It was, uh, it was a great experience to see it though, you know what I mean? To see my daughter interact with other kids is one of those things. It's just like, man, you really ain't got no real friends. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, got, I thought I saw it the hard way when I was a kid, but uh, nah, she got some friends though. They're no, 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 before you get out of here, you gotta hit these motherfuckers with the difference between AZ women and Cali women. I'm pissing people off. I guess some people. I got just my glasses for this. <laughs> I can't let you run out of here before you I tell them about be, I'm tell about them sales. I'm gonna go ahead and be respectful. Oh, shit. Disrespectful. <laughs> the difference between California and Arizona is very simple. California women know what they want. Mm. Arizona women go for what they need. Oh. California woman go work her ass off. And do whatever she wants because she don't need a nigga. She gonna bust out her own chain. She gonna have her own rolling on. Shit, thanks. Arizona woman go look for the nigga with the rolling on and the bust down necklace because she at the club every weekend. Oh shit! The difference between a want and a need. Yeah. She wants you. She needs you. So if you got that bag, you can go ahead and get whatever you need out here. You go to California, you better make sure you get what you want. But that's kind of the difference between the AZ women. In California, women respectfully. Not to say that. This is the comment in the corner. We do not promote anything this man has just said. That is all his feelings. Yes. Say, women, I love you because I got to look at you every damn day. <laughs> Y'all not about to come at me. Don't at me, Don't Gene. Don't some, at me, Gene, for this one. Good Arizona women. I'm not speaking <laughs> for a broad statement. I'm just speaking for my own personal aspects and my own personal experience. We're dealing with Arizona women. In California women. In seeing Arizona women, we have seen California. I've seen how they move, and I and I've watched it. So if y'all can prove me wrong, y'all can tell me that I'm wrong. Let me know. But from my own experience, I stand on. I stand on business. This one. Here. 
On that note, we about to get up out of here. But one more time, tell them where they can uh, find your your brand at. Give them your uh, IG handle, your Facebook handle, your Twitter, your TikTok. Let them know about your businesses, what you got coming up. And tell them how you're about to kill this comedy game because you love it. I mean, I'm open for all the mics. If y'all want to find me on Instagram, it's modes 3 That's M-O-D-E-Z-3. You know, go ahead and watch all them reels. Go ahead. If you're having a bad day, go ahead and want to send somebody some funny shit at work. Go ahead and tap in. Go ahead and send, share, like, and all that. If you want to get some good, good, good edibles, you know what I'm talking about, the goody good way, go ahead and fuck with me on Gourmet Goodies, LLC. And that's also on Instagram. If you want to see some funny shit on uh, Facebook, go ahead and hit me on Modi, say what. You know what I mean? I was spell it out, but as long as hell, I'm going to leave with that name. So I ain't hard to find. Um, if there's anything else y'all need, y'all know, uh, especially when it comes to food, let me know. I'm open for all, all, all type of cooking. You can use THC, CBD, regular food. Y'all got barbecues, baby showers, niggas going to jail, niggas coming home, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm cooking for everything, you know what I'm saying? Your mama just got out the hospital, but she can't eat salt. We're going to get it right anyway, you hear me? So just go ahead and tap in. I got y'all. That's the boy me, uh, uh, Mo D's, man. And I'm the boy me, Gene313. You know you heard. You heard the comedy quarter, man. We do what we do. When we do it, you know what I'm saying? We outside of the box with it. Man, I want to thank my guests for more time. Appreciate you, boys. Like you. And up, man. Y'all motherfuckers have a good day. We out of here.